you'll be our way in short order. Amen. I guess to ring in the new year. Uh huh. All right. Uh, I heard you had a, a death and a funeral uh, yesterday. And, uh, Amen. I was uh, a friend of mine passed away, and uh, the funeral was at the Catholic Church, and and uh, there's no joke in that. I wouldn't I wouldn't joke about that, but I will tell you this. I'm uh, used to being one of the taller uh, fellows in the room. I just, I've been fortunate to do that. I don't look down on people in a psychological way, but generally I'm taller than everybody, so I tend to look down on them in that way. But yesterday at the funeral were some of the players from what we used to call Memphis State and the University of Memphis. Now, I'm telling you what, it wasn't long before I realized that I'm really not that tall. <laughs> there was a guy who had a pair of pants on that was taller than me. <laughs> That's the biggest guy I've ever seen in my life. The biggest. And when I went to college uh, the first time, I, I've tried to go more than once. Uh, one time they wouldn't let me. But the first time I went, I had this idea, well, I'm going to play basketball because I'm 6'2", you know. And that, that's, that's tall where I come from. Uh -huh. And uh, I run out there and met the coach and all that. And it wasn't Memphis or Memphis State, as you might have guessed. But at the school in Arkansas, I said, you know, I, I feel like I could play basketball here. And he said, well, I don't, I don't know if you're tall enough or not. <laughs> he was right about that. I mean, they had uh, that guy sitting on the bench that were taller than I am. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a humbling, everybody needs one. And uh, I got one, but those guys, I don't, I don't know. I lost, uh, I, you know, I, I used to watch Memphis back in the day when Keith Lee was there. And anybody remember that? Some of that. But I, I haven't kept up with it over the years. But whoever these guys were, they're big. I, they were big guys, and, uh, uh, and there were several of them, not just one of them. So, you know, I, I tell you what, that's just, that's just amazing, just amazing what God has done. I mean, make some of us tall, some of us short. Uh -huh. I can't go the other way. You know, that'd be, that'd be meddling. <laughs> but, he, but he does make us all different. Uh -huh. And yet we're one in Christ. Amen. Amen. And we need to demonstrate that, of course, mm -hmm. to the world because the world needs us. Amen. God's put us here for this time mm -hmm. and for a reason. Now tonight... I want you to find the book of Acts, uh, chapter 26, and um, we're going to begin at verse 9, and we're going to talk about Jesus tonight. All right. Amen. Uh, I thought it was appropriate, and all this month I've been talking about Jesus at Westover. Not that we don't talk about him any other time, but we've been especially talking about what the Bible says about Jesus this month. So I apologize to my congregation who has, to some degree, already heard what I'm going to say tonight. But that's all right. You can't get too much Jesus. Yeah. If you do, you can go home. You know. <laughs> well, I just had enough. Uh, there was a, there was, it is true. It's not meant to be funny. It's, it's not funny at all. But uh, recently somebody was talking to me about a funeral and they said, that preacher just... He just preached too much about Jesus. So they got too much. And uh, it, actually it was a Jewish person that said this. They just, uh, too much, too much Jesus. So if you get too much, you can get on out of here. <laughs> no, no, we want you to stay. If you, if you, get, you can't get too much. Amen. But we're going to talk about Jesus. And uh, I want to talk tonight about who Jesus is, who Jesus truly is. Because we live in a world that is increasingly ignorant of who Jesus is. In fact, uh, I was reading some statistics from Baptist Press about our own state of Tennessee and the, and the spiritual state that it's in. And these are startling to hear. In fact, uh, one might question them, except you all you have to do is look around you see the see the way things are going uh -huh. and the way folks are living. 
And you realize these statistics are bound to be true. Amen. 66% of the people in our state are unchurched uh -huh. and have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's a lot of folks. That Amen. 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 Nine out of ten, this ought to break your heart, nine out of ten Tennessee children will grow to adulthood and have no relationship with with Jesus Christ. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. Now I want to. I want. I want you to. I want to tell you. I want all. If you're under, let's see. I can do this. I think I can get away with it. Let's say if you're under 11. No, let's make it 12. If you're under 12 tonight, would you stand up? Would you? Would you stand up? You can cover your head if you'd like. Well, you are blessed. Amen. Because you're going to hear about Jesus. Amen. You can sit down now. <laughs> you, you're going to hear about him. All right. I'm going to tell you about him. I'm going to tell you who he is. Not, not that your family has it. I'm not presuming that they have it. But I'm just going to tell you I am. Mm -hmm. And right. because the reason I'm going to tell you about him is he is your only hope. Amen. 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 And you parents know that he's your only hope in raising children Amen. and grandchildren. Amen. He's, he's, he's all we got, but he's enough. And Amen. Man, what, what's the world got? What do they got to offer? You're sitting in your living room with the TV and you go, why? Why didn't she just say? I can't believe she said that. <laughs> what did he just say? What those two guys just do? Right there in front of me. So what's the world got? Well, it has nothing. And uh, it really has nothing to offer. This life is all there is. Get all you can get. Step on whoever you have to step on. Get it, and then you're going to get out. And uh, that's not enough. That's not enough. And so we know that there's trouble, and we know that the only hope is Jesus, so therefore, tonight, I'm going to talk about Jesus. All right. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. From the little folks that drive down the road knocking on doors, talking about Jesus and don't know who Jesus is. They don't know. They said, well, Michael, who was an angel one time, he became Jesus. That don't sound like they know who he is to me. Michael's an angel. Jesus is the Lord of glory. That can't be the same person. Right. 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 Another group says, well, you know, yeah, he's God, but we're all going to be gods. As God, uh, as God is, you know, all the little sayings they have. I got a, I got a kind of a sad way of thinking in my family, the Griffins, which all I had was girls. <laughs> I knew what he was doing. That was good enough. Uh, my cousin has a bunch of boys, and he's a Mormon. So the Griffins are all Mormons now, living out in Utah. He doesn't know who Jesus is. He talks about him, but he doesn't know him. You know, people can talk about somebody and not know them. Amen. They can there was a guy out in front of Sam several years ago, and he was talking about Jesus, and I went up and talked to him for a little bit, and, and uh, I said, have you got a Bible? It wasn't long before I realized that Jesus he was talking about, I've never met. And I said, have you got a Bible? And he said, no, and I've told his, my congregation this several times. I said, well, don't you think you ought to get his book and read it? Because you are talking about him. Yeah. But there's a lot of folks talking about Jesus. They don't know who he is. Amen. There's a lot of preachers who have churches that don't preach on Jesus. Have mercy. That's a scandal. Amen. Amen. I wish some of these churches were hijacked by a gospel preacher who would preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. Folks would get saved and things would be changed. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to the scripture because after all, the scripture is what tells us about Jesus. And I want to get to uh, Paul, who gave his testimony of conversion several times. I want to use 
what he said and then also what uh, is written in several other places. I won't have time to draw your attention there just except by way of passing. And uh, I want to pick up here in chapter uh, 26 of the book of Acts and I want to pick up in about verse 9 where Paul is giving his testimony. We all have one. If you've been saved, you've got one. It, it may not be as impressive as some folks, you know. Uh, I remember hearing motorcycle gang member, former members giving their testimony. And I thought, boy, I need to make up one like that. <laughs> you know, I need one like that. That's a dandy. You know, that's a good one. But the truth of it is, is there was a time in our lives, if you're saved today, when you were as lost as you could be. All right. You may have not been as bad as you could be, but you were heading toward the one who's as bad as he could be. Mm -hmm. And then Christ interrupted your journey, yeah. saved you and transformed you, and now you may not be as good as you could be, but you're headed toward the ones who is as good as he could be. Have mercy. Amen. 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 Have mercy. So that is where we're at tonight. And so let me pick up here where Paul is giving his testimony. I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I did so in Jerusalem. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority from the chief priest, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Stephen was one of them, you remember? You remember that they put... The, the, the cloak of Stephen at the feet of the Apostle Paul, which someday would be Apostle Paul, Saul, that there he was standing as uh, one who was full of the Holy Spirit, was just about to break loose with a vibrant, powerful testimony about God, and uh, he was dead, and Paul was there, and that's what he was up to. And I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. Isn't that something? What a testimony here now. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. In this connection, I journeyed to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven. Now, this is God interrupting the sinner's journey. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know when he interrupted yours, but he interrupted mine when I was nine. All right. But he still has to interrupt me every once in a while. All right. <laughs> right. Interrupt you for salvation, but he has to interrupt you to straighten you out. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Sanctification. So anyway, uh, midday, I saw this light shown round about me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You didn't know God could speak Hebrew, did you? <laughs> well, anyway, it is hard for you to kick against the goads or that which directs the animals and keeps them from turning to the right or the left. And I said, where are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Mm -hmm. Jesus got a hold of Paul. Mm -hmm. And he went from persecuting to being persecuted. Right. He went to arresting to being under arrest himself. Yes, sir. Now, I just hope he's got a hold of you. Amen. Uh -huh. This uh, facility, along with all of you who are gathered here tonight, remind me of really my roots. Uh, one of the reasons I love to come here is because of the way I grew up and mm -hmm. my, uh, my heritage, if you will. Being in a building about this size with a group of people just about like this, 
And uh, remembering that one of my favorite things to do was to chew gum. And when I was done chewing, I would take a really good nap. <laughs> and I was good at it. I've noticed older people are good at it too. But, uh, you know, it's not just kids that know how to sleep in yeah. church. But you know, somehow or another, through all that sleeping and chewing gum and giving my mother a rough way to go, God got a hold of me. All right. All right. And I don't know to this day exactly all there is to know about that. But I know he did. And that's what happened here. He got a hold of it. Uh -huh. He interrupted his journey. Uh -huh. He took him from the way he was going and put him on a different path. He took him, he took him from a broad road that the Bible says leads to destruction and put him on a narrow road. Uh -huh. Paul was later to say that his own body bore the marks of his faith in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. That his faith was so, so as our faith should be that he was willing to suffer because he knew Jesus had suffered for him. Uh -huh. yes, so who is Jesus? In part, he is the one who suffered and bled and died when we are the ones who should have suffered and bled and died. All right. He did it on our behalf. Uh -huh. He did it for us. Uh -huh. The Bible tells us that Jesus is God. Some people have difficulty wrapping their thoughts around that. I, I must admit I do too. I, I've never heard anybody adequately explain how Jesus can be both God and man. In fact, some people find it so distasteful that they start a group that totally ignores and in some cases attacks the very notion that Jesus could be both God and man. And yet the Bible says he is. Uh -huh. The Bible says, I had a man ask me one time, well now how can that be? I said, you're asking me how that can be. <laughs> we had a little fun. We, a few weeks ago we were talking about some great mysteries, you know. It might have been last week. and You know, we were saying, well how can a brown cow eat green grass and give white milk. That seems like a great mystery, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of mysteries. Uh -huh. Pastor and I, if we'd had time, we'd have, we'd have solved all of them. We were on a roll back there. <laughs> you know, when it's just two men in a room by themselves, they, they think they know a lot. <laughs> but there are great mysteries. Amen. I, you know, in John 3, it says, the wind blows uh -huh. where it wills, such as the Holy Spirit. And there was nothing in my mind, in my DNA, I like saying that's just proud to say, <laughs> that would have ever suggested I would have been a preacher. Uh -huh. No. No, no, no. Somebody once said about somebody, you don't, need a college fund, you need a bail fund. <laughs> there was nothing to suggest I would be a preacher. Well, I, went to, I went to school after I was saved and I even joined a music group and I love to joke and I've even shared it with you that, that I tried out for a group called Southern Singers in Arkansas. Now, unfortunately, I took my guitar with me to try out and I got a note shortly thereafter saying that they could use my guitar. <laughs> I was never clear, by the way, whether that meant I could play it or not. I don't, see, I thought maybe they'd just take it away from me, which is it made me a little nervous. But, you know, I, there was nothing in me that would make me a preacher. I slept in Old Testament class. I even got an F in the Old Testament. That's why I don't preach on it much anymore. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I, I, love the old, I love the Old Testament. But, you know, there was nothing in me. No. I like to shoot pool. I'm pretty good at it. You know. Me too. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> I like to, like to go to those classes, you know, just, just show up, be on time, put a smile on my face. There was nothing in me. And I assume Paul's testimony would be there was nothing in him either. In fact, even worse than that, he was persecuting the church. 
Uh -huh. But the Bible says this Jesus who is God, and the Bible says he is God. In fact, uh, there's scripture after scripture that says he is God uh, uh, from Thomas who said, my Lord and my God, you remember when when uh, after the resurrection he had doubted that Jesus had been raised and mm -hmm. so when Jesus appeared to him, uh -huh. Jesus said, well, go ahead, have a shot at me. I'm using my language, feel of me. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, my Lord and my God. One group I was talking to one day, a couple of men, and I said, well, what, what, did you, what do you think Thomas meant when he said, my Lord and my God? And they said, I think he was, he was wrong. He was wrong. What? He was wrong. Yeah. Whatever. I think he was right. Amen. 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 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory uniquely begotten of the Father. Uh -huh. In fact, in Scripture... Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Mm. Yes, sir. Philip, you remember, encountered the Ethiopian eunuch, uh -huh. and he began at Isaiah preaching unto him Jesus. Uh -huh. But you know, there's always a, always a well, no, that's, that's not what that means. Well, I know the scripture has to be interpreted, but it's pretty clear there. It just says Jesus is God. Yeah. It says he's man, too. He real flesh and blood. There's some who denied that. I mentioned that this morning. There were some who said, well, all flesh is evil. Jesus could not have been flesh and blood because all flesh is evil. Material or matter is evil. So Jesus couldn't have been... He couldn't have been flesh and blood. He just, he just appeared to be. He, he couldn't have been. But he was. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. He was. He bled. Yeah. He suffered. Uh -huh. He was bruised and he right. was crushed. Uh -huh. He was unrecognizable. Uh -huh. Don't you love people that say that just can't be true when they don't know what they're talking about? Yeah. It is true. It is true. All right. And then you meet people who say, well, the Jesus that you know, he can't change me, man. I'm, and they'll go tell you, they'll tell you a story about how tough they are and all the things they've done. Well, you are no tougher than Peter. Uh -huh. <laughs> Peter, whoop you. <laughs> uh, Peter, Peter was in the garden. He just drew his sword and filleted somebody's ear. That's a tough dude. Uh -huh. <laughs> we couldn't let him in here tonight. <laughs> Now, Paul, it's all right, but Peter, you stay outside. You, you work security. <laughs> say, well, who are we going to get for security? I'm going to say Peter. <laughs> I'm voting for Peter uh, because I don't want to make him mad. Right. Uh, so anyway, but you say, well, that Jesus uh, is good for you, but no, no, he, he can't change me because... You don't know what I've done, and you don't know where I've been. <laughs> oh, you don't know what you're talking about, because the Jesus that I'm talking about causes the blind to see, the right. deaf to hear, right. and the lame to walk, right. and people who are dead in their trespasses and uh -huh. sins to come alive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. All right. yeah. That's the one who can take a boy like me. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know if I want to blame him for this or not, but <laughs> boy like me and make a preacher out of him. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's him. Amen. He's that Jesus. He's our Savior. Uh -huh. The Jesus I tell you about. And you ought to come to him and be saved. Because he's the only one who can save you. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid it all. Oh, yes, he did. All yes, to him. Sir. All. Yes, sir. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it. Wow. Yes. One of my favorite things to do as a kid was to 
to clean the, the board that was in front of the classroom. I don't know why. I think I like smelling of that cleaner. <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that. that. That would explain why I'm doing this tonight. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know how it was where, where you went to school or, or that kind of thing, but, uh, but I know that I like to clean that board up. It, it looked brand new. And uh, the, here come the teacher with the chalk, you know, messing it up again. <laughs> I like to clean it up and put this look beautiful. And the good thing that I've just really loved about Jesus all my life is he can take me and just clean me up. All right, all right. I get kind of dirty. When I was a boy, we had a we had a dirt road in front of the house, and my grandmother kept the house really well. And and uh, I don't know if there's much dirt in her house, but every once in a while they'd let my sister and I just go out and play in the dirt, and I really love that. And then they'd get a wash tub, and uh, Grandma would uh, heat some water up in a kettle on a stove. And uh, then she'd tell, I don't know why she did this. She, she put a little water in there, but then she'd make us get in that water before she poured it in there, that hot water. I, she didn't want y'all to scold you, see? I don't know what she wanted. <laughs> I know one thing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You got somebody with boiling water pouring them down there, and you're sitting there a little shaky. <laughs> But uh, we love we love getting cleaned up. Amen. Love getting cleaned up. Amen. And the clothes would stand on their own. You didn't have to worry about that. They were standing over in the corner. And the dish rags were too. I don't know if any of you had experiences like that, but I remember dish rags just as uh, they were just stiff as they could be. Man, get, she had no fabric softener. So. But we like getting cleaned up, but the one great thing about Jesus is he'll clean you up. Yeah. Now, you, you, let, let me just, let me give you an example of this. You know, we can remember some things we've done that are not right. And, uh, or at least I can. You may have not done anything wrong. But, um, you know, I told you earlier that Paul was there when Stephen was killed. Uh -huh. Now, you can't tell me that if God hadn't cleaned his heart, he could have gone on because he would have laid there every night thinking wherever he was about what he had done mm -hmm. to Stephen. But that's what God did. God cleaned up his heart and forgave him and essentially told him, you'll see Stephen again. He's better off. He's with me. I'm taking care of him. Oh, all right. But that's what God can do. That's what God will do. And that's what God has done uh -huh. in Christ. Amen. Let's bow together. Father, we thank you for your word tonight about who Jesus is. Yeah. We realize you are Lord, that you're a master, that you're our Savior, yeah. mm -hmm. that you left the glory of heaven, oh, yeah. that you came down to earth to walk where we walk, to uh -huh. be among us, mm -hmm. to take upon yourself all the sin that we would ever commit, yeah. to be separated from the Father, in anguish to cry out, why have you forsaken me? Right. Out of love and obedience to the Father and love for a poor sinner like me. Right. And for all who gathered who love you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.